All right, we all live. Uh, can I see myself? Let me just very quickly have a look. Uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, hope you guys doing really well for day number three. I can't believe that uh, it's already day number three on this uh, five day challenge. Uh, all right, let's see if I can see myself online. Can you guys see me? Am I live? Yes, I am. I can see myself, which is pretty cool. Awesome. All right, day number three. Welcome, guys. Uh, welcome to this day number three. Super excited to share today's journey with you guys because I know today one is, again, the most important one for you, all of you, because if you are in a service-based business, you are looking to sell, you are looking to make a bit of money, uh, you want to start up a business, you want to build a business, uh, and you want to sell something which is not tangible something intangible and you want to make a bit of money on that and you want to create as a business so this is pretty cool stuff which we're going to go through today uh, and i'm going to share something which i've learned from my mentors and we applied it we made a good amount of money we shared with other people and a lot of other students in our uh, you know brad is one example uh, who's just did it yesterday pretty much following what i'm going to talk about today right so really cool and uh, super excited super 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 excited all right, if you're jumping on this, come and say hi. We got people jumping on this call as well. Hey, Colin, you on uh, Zoom, which is cool. Uh, you can go on Facebook as well if you like. A lot of people on the other side as well. So I'm going to be jumping between this and the Facebook both together today. So I hope you're doing well. You're feeling a bit better today. Uh, but if you want to join the other people. So all of you guys who are coming in, come and say hi. If you guys can hear me, fine. Uh, all right, look at this. My man's here as well. A lot of people coming in. Awesome, 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 awesome. Good, good. We're gonna get started in uh, in a minute, guys. We're just gonna get started in a minute. Give me, give me a minute uh, until I do all this sort of sort on my slides. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys see me fine? Hear me fine? Or let me share my screen. All right. Uh, hey, Anouk. Good to have you, Pankaj. Good to have you, brother. Brett, my brother. Good to have you here. All right, a lot of people, guys. Cool, 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 cool. Awesome. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let me share my, all right, loud and clear. Yeah, awesome. Give me a second. Awesome, Jason, you're here as well. All right, Jason's here on this side. Cool. Good to have you here, brother. Good to have you. Good to have you. Hope the date went really well yesterday. You, you need to have these dates, right? You must have these dates. All right, um, so I've got, uh, just to go, let you go, guys know as well, we have a lot of people on Facebook in the group as well, watching this live. Some of you guys are watching on Zoom, which is fine, which is cool. So I'm gonna be moving between the screen. So uh, I might not be able to answer some of your questions. <laughs> um, Colin, uh, Jason won't be able to see this message unless you change it to all panelists and attendees. So Jason wouldn't be able to see your messages. So change your message to all panel to attendees so he can see it as well. All right. We've got a lot of people on this side as well. Cool, guys. Awesome. Great to have you on this side. Let me see if I can share my screen, which is done. Let me start the slides. All right. Here we are live. And with today's lesson, where we're going to talk about present or present, sorry, not present, present to influence. If you're one of those people who want to inspire people, who want to move people, who want to motivate people uh, to buy your product or services, to buy them or join your community, or anything you want to do when you stand up and speak to a lot of people, uh, this is the format. We've been following this format for a while now, and uh, we've been getting results. So today you're going to find a really good lesson for your business if you're one of those people who love to talk and love to uh, you know, build businesses at a larger scale as well right so um, let's have a look very very quickly so today's lesson is oh before i get to today jump into let's very quickly recap what happened yesterday what did we talk about yesterday so number one thing for me is i just sort of you guys to understand it number one thing is focus on clients results right yesterday was number one thing in this perspective that we all must focus on clients results my business my personal business has no meaning if my clients are not 
getting the results. And same in your business as well. Your formula, your programs, your anything you have, whatever you studied has no meaning if your clients are not getting results. So our number one as a business owner, our number one goal should be, if it's not already, should be to getting our clients results. Right, that's the reason our business is here. So everything else uh, is completely, um, you know, has no meaning at all. So focus on your clients' results. When you focus on your clients' results, how can I get these people results? Then the things changes. If you focus too much on the program steps, how you can make them better, that has no meaning, right? Those steps are there to give your clients results, right? If you focus on clients' results, things change, right? Never sell vitamins. Never, ever, ever sell vitamin unless this is your business to sell vitamins, right? You are part of all those companies who are selling vitamins, then yeah, please do sell vitamins. For all of the other people, for you know, people like us, for especially me or people like some of you guys as well, if you are in the business of selling services, coaching, consulting, don't sell vitamins because uh, you know, I think the question I'll give it to you guys to ask yourself, you know, every time you're trying to propose something new, every time you're trying to give it to somebody, uh, just take a pause in that space, right? You created a product and you said, okay, this product is really good. I love this product, you know, and, and I feel there is a need in the marketplace. Then you stop yourself and pause for a few minutes and say, am I selling vitamins or is it a painkiller? Right, pause it and you'll see that you'll get the answer, right? You'll get the answer. So when you do that, uh, because you're going to be true to yourself, must be true to yourself, because if you are true to yourself, you are pretty much true to your client as well. So very important lesson that we never sell vitamins, always sell painkillers. The other one is always sell one destination, always sell one destination. What it means is you sell one destination, but you provide different options to get to that destination. So always have different options to get to one destination. Never have choices of destinations. Never ever have choices of destinations because confused client will never buy anything. You don't want to confuse them. You always give them one destination and whoever wants to get to that destination will come to you and join you. The rest of the other people, not for you today. Don't want to serve everybody because that's the mistake most people make. Take them one destination, give them different options to get to their destination, right? The last one is find a starving crowd who are ready to pay to solve their problems because every business exists today on this planet. Every business exists today, which are legit business, they is, exist today is because they're solving some sort of problem, right? And you just need to find it, which problem you want to solve in the marketplace. Right? Which problem you want to solve in the marketplace? If you don't find it, your business might not stay there for long run. Right? Very, very, very important. So, right. So let's get going. Uh, yes. Sorry, Anouk. I've just looked at it. Yes, there is a workbook available in the file section. Uh, you can download it. It's day number three. It's available. Um, and you can just go and have a look there. Um, download day number three. It's been there whole day today. Sorry, I put it in the morning, but I forgot to mention to everybody. Yeah, just download it, work through with me. Uh, and there's some of the questionnaires in there as well. Yeah, that's available. All right, cool. Let's get started for today, right? Are you guys ready? So today's presentation for you, if you are looking to influence people and would like to you know, move people to take action, whatever action you want them to take, uh, you want to move them to take some sort of action. You want them to join your program, join your community, something you're doing it. And also you want to, you know, sell some sort of uh, product or services. You want them to buy your services. You want to do something like that. So today's going to be really good for you. But before I sort of get into that, I just want you guys to understand these things, right? Um, why it is so important to do this. Why it's really important. See, we all, um, you know, when we get started, when you work on one-on-one, when you work on one-on-one in your business, you have a client and you serve, and the client or serving the client is one-to-one, -one, um, you work as an employee. When your business requires your time to run, means that you work an employee as an employee in your business, right? So one-to-one -one is always... Um, an employee kind of business, right? It doesn't mean that you don't do it. 
I never, I'm not against, I still do it. I'm doing it as well. But I'm just saying you always have different options. Don't just have one option means that you're just going to work one on one with everybody, right? This is one option. Yes, you must have it, but you also have the other option because this option is never going to be able to scale your business to the next level. Why is that? Because we all have 24 hours. There is a limit in a week where you can spend one on one with people. Right? If you work one too many, you have a business. Because one too many is you can have 50 people in the room, you can 100 people room. If you are like Tony Robbins or any like Dalai Lama, you can have 10,000, 20,000 people in the room as well, right? It all depends who you are, what you want to become. You can have a lot of people you can bring in the room and help them at one place. So one too many is the way to go if you want to scale your business faster. Right? It's very important. If you want to scale your business, if you don't have a business today, you hardly getting clients, you don't have it, don't start one too many today, right? If you don't have it, if you already have five to 10 clients, you've done the work, yeah, go ahead and do it because you already have something in place, right? So really, really important. So this is what we've been taught from our schooling system. Um, what most people do is, see, if you wanna make more money, if you wanna increase your revenue or you know the money you make per week, per month, what we do is, the way we look at it is, okay, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna increase my per hour rate. At the moment, if I'm charging $80, I'm gonna do $90. If I'm doing $90, I'm going to do $100, right? Or the other thing we do is, okay, I'm not going to work eight hours. I'm going to work 10 hours or 12 hours or 14 hours. This is how we've been taught to look at these two variables all the time. We don't look at any other variable. We don't look at the client or employer. We only look at the hours you can charge and you can increase those hours. And also the time you spend at work, you spend eight hours, six hours, 20 hours, whatever you do, we always look for time and also rate per hour. But we forget one biggest variable, which is a client. You know, if you only increase this, the money only gonna increase a little bit. But this is an example when you people ignore the client variable. Right. When you ignore this, it what happened? Client variable from the university system being taught is always constant. It doesn't change. Um, I was given belief so many years and years that I just need to work with one employer, even though I was making two thousand dollars a day, and I started to feel that a two thousand dollar day is a good amount of money. But um, then I was just fixed with one client. I said, I'm doing the same thing. Why couldn't I just go and work with five different clients? Same thing I was doing. Even I worked for IBM, Telstra, Oracle's, ANZ, NAB, all these companies I was worked for. I was doing the same thing. Nothing changed from that perspective, right? Same sort of work. The only thing changed was I didn't actually know how to uh, package it in a way which I can sell it to multiple clients, right? In this example, the same thing. You do eight hours. And you charge $30 an hour, but you work with five uh, clients, right? You serve five clients. And what happens is you double the amount straight away, right? Even though you reduce the price, but you doubled it, right? It's really important. When you work one-to-one, -one, the focus is always on time, right? This is the way it is. When you work one-to-one, -one, focus is always on the time, how much time you spend. And people always say, do I spend eight hours, 10 hours, 20 hours, whatever. Focus is always on the time. See, when... How do, uh, how do I know that uh, employee mindset people or the people I'm talking to are employee mindset, the way they work? They always talk about time, how long it's going to take for me to complete the work. Right? They always look at the time variable as the main variable, as the number one thing, right at the top. Right? And they charge client based on that as well. They see, I didn't actually know that when I started in this business for the first time, and this is what I was doing. And if tell me if you guys are doing the same thing, right? I was doing the same. I was doing this. Um, somebody asked me for a quote, right? This is what we're going to do. This is what help we need. And can you send us a, a, a quote for that? And I sent a quote. So this is how I created my quote for my first or second quotes, which I was sending for my services to clients. Um, how much time I'm going to spend doing this. This is what I did. And okay, this is how much time I'm going to do. Then I multiplied by uh, the timing and the hours I wanted to charge. And then I put it together and this is what I did. And I charged based on that, right? So I didn't actually care uh, what results are they looking for, what other, you know, why, what I'm contribution is going to be, um, all that sort of stuff. I didn't, I didn't at all. I just charged based on me, right? Whatever time I'm going to spend. This is what I did. But now it's changed. I don't do that anymore. And I'll tell you what happened now. 
See, when you work on one to many and you learn the art to work to one to many, you never charge based on the time. When you send a quote to somebody, you never charge based on that. What do you charge based on that? The solution you're providing to them. It's never based on the hours, never ever based on the hours. I don't do that anymore. And I think uh, you wanna make sure that you, you do it as well. Um, if you have employees, yes, you wanna factor that because you're gonna pay your employees as part of that, but always make sure that uh, you charge based on the problem you're solving, not that. So when you work one to many, the focus is always on the solution because what client is looking for, the solution from you. They don't look at time you're spending on there, right? Employers look at the time you spend. Clients, they're looking for solution. How quickly you can solve their problem, right? How quickly you can do it. So let's, let me ask you this question, right? Let's look at this example. This would make a bit more sense as well. So, you know, dentist, if you look at it as a, has a pricing model, he says, I'm going to charge $200 per hour. Walk into a dentist's office saying, hey, I'm having a toothache at, at the moment, uh, really bad toothache. Um, and dentist says, I'm going to charge $200 an hour. Come in, I'm get, it's going to take me an hour to fix it. Or he says to one more thing, he says to you, okay, or I'm going to charge $300 and I'll fix your tooth in 15 minutes. Well, I'll fix it in 15 minutes, but I'm going to charge $300. That's what I charge to fix this thing. Now, the question is, what would you choose? Which option would you choose? Would you choose to $200 and let him spend one hour doing whatever he wants to do to fix your toothache? Or are you going to go over the second option, right? So very important. If I was me, I was definitely going for a second option because I, I want to get, get rid of the problem as quickly as possible, right? That, that's what we want to do, right? So very important to see this. Uh, as a concept, when people come to you, they are looking to solve their problem. They're not looking to drag their problem. So for you to work one hour or five hour, 10 hour, doesn't actually matter much. In your eyes, yes, it does matter because you're spending time. But in your client's eyes is they're just looking for a problem to be solved, right? That's the reason people are coming to you. That's the reason people are there for you, right? So I right? hope this makes sense, right? So uh, let's let's take a quick uh, um let me see if you guys still here, if you guys can hear me. I'm, are you guys good? I'm just going to keep going. Uh, are you guys enjoying it today? Does it actually make sense? Are you getting something what I'm saying? So I'm, it's going to be going out in and out of Facebook and looking at the slides. Uh, but I'm just very quickly looking at the comments here. Um, am I making sense? Can you feel, does it actually make sense to you? Does it make sense to you? Cool. That's good. That's good. Thank you, Jason. All right, that's good. So I'm just gonna keep going, guys. I wouldn't be able to see these slides. Awesome, that's good. Awesome, let's do it, guys. Um, so, now let's ask you, if you wanna take your business to the next level, you know, if you are one of those people who wanna grow your business, who wanna scale your business, who wanna take your business to the next level, or especially in 2019, if you believe that, and this is one question you must answer, do you believe that 2019, you know, this rest of the six months of this year uh, is gonna be the best year for your business? Do you believe that? You know, if you have this belief, you must do something different. And I truly believe, and I want to suggest this to you guys, that you must do a presentation. You stand up and speak in front of people, sell something, influence them something, do something in that. Because when you do that, people see you as an authority anyway. When you stand up and speak, their unconscious mind, their unconscious mind makes you the authority itself. So it makes it really easy to do the other bits. That's the biggest advantage. Name anybody out there who you follow today on a public spaces, whether it's a social media, whether it's online or anything you follow anybody today, you'll see them the reason you follow without even knowing it. And you just like that person. Why you like that person? Because that person has been doing one too many for a long time. That's the one skill they mastered really well, you know? Pick anybody out there who, who you like. This one skill, they mastered it because this one skill can take your business to a completely different level. If you're making 100000 today, it'll take you to a million dollars very, very quickly. Right? 
this is this is why it's I said so the presentation when you do it which influences people to take some sort of action in a quickest way to take your business to the next level this is and I truly believe that we do it in our business we teach people in our business as well right same thing so this has been my obsession from last two years now you know I'm <laughs> Uh, in last two years, I've presented more than 100 times, right? It's very funny stories I want to share with you guys as well. But uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell some of the stories uh, very specifically. Look, uh, my intention been from last two years, since I got started in the journey, I was about 2017 and starting of 2017 when we sold our company. And I said, okay, what do I want to do now? And um, teaching was number one thing came up in my mind that I want to teach people, right? But uh, um, Nobody bought anything from me. I did all the presentation. I stood up and did all that, but nobody bought anything. Even though, even though, now think of this, even though I had runs on the board, even though I made the money, even though uh, I had the credibility, right? I worked for a lot of corporations. I did the work, but nobody bought anything from me. And it's a really different way of looking at it. If you believe that today, that you need to spend a bit of time to gain a credibility, let me tell you that your credibility has no meaning. They didn't give me any money, single zero dollar when I stood up and spoke. And I'm going to share the reason today why they didn't give me the money as well. Right? It's very interesting, right? So those, these two years of my life been really, really interesting. I think very challenging, but very interesting, but very rewarding as well. Right? All these pain I've gone through, but after that, making the business successful is very good learning curve. Right? So I've created 11 offers. 11 offers. So yesterday we talked about irresistible offers, right? I created 11 offers and sold them. 11 different offers, right? Um, using the system I'm going to talk to you about on Friday. Um, I sold via Evergreen webinar, which continuously runs. I've sold via VSL. VSL is a video sales letter. Uh, putting the video sales letter right on top of that. Uh, sold by live presentations in the room. Also webinars, whatever you want to call it, right? So I've sold online and offline both ways. Uh, and it's uh, been pretty. My first, or my first five presentations were terrible and absolutely terrible, didn't sell anything, made zero amount of money, spent so much amount of money doing the work. But now imagine that, you know, every month I was doing something and uh, didn't make any money. Zero money, zero dollars, right? And uh, now let me ask you the question. Would you like to know the number one mistake I was making in those five presentations where I failed terribly, terrible, right? Made a huge mistake. But there was a number one mistake I learned. The moment I changed, it started to work. Would you like to know that number one mistake? That number one mistake, right? There was a huge thing, huge, huge, huge thing. And that changed my business completely upside down, changed it absolutely everything in the business. So now the question is, would you like to know one, what one mistake I was making? Uh, in those five presentations, I stood up, spoke, shared my heart out with people. I gave them everything, um, but they didn't buy anything. No, no, I didn't focus on client. But guess what? Like, let's see, let's see what what. Okay, let's let's just look at it. What was that? What do you believe the number one thing was? Right? Yeah. All right. Let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are. What What do you think? I did something for you know five six months. I stood up and spoke, uh, and I stood up and spoke and trying to sell something to people, uh, but at the end nobody bought anything. Tell me what you think the reason was. Tell me what you think the reason was. I think Anouk said it one reason, which was pretty cool. Uh, he said I didn't focus on clients' problem. Yeah, that's one thing. You didn't acknowledge the authority frame. <laughs> Uh, he's, he's a student. So Colin knows that really well. So Colin's talking about the authority frame. Uh, no, Colin, that wasn't the reason as well. That wasn't the reason. Uh, you didn't close. No, no, you were becoming too salesy. Um, no, not, not really. Not really. No, uh, you focused on your product, not their pain. Mm, interesting. Very interesting. You were interested in only selling. Mm, nice. Focused on sales. Holy crap. Okay, talking to wrong target market. Oh, right. That could be one of them. Yeah. yeah. See, all of you guys are, have different beliefs. Can you catch yourself? 
Some of you guys talking too much about sales. Do you not like people selling to you, do you? All these people who are making saying you were selling too much, seems like you guys don't like selling too much as well, or don't like selling or being sold to. <laughs> I'm just having fun, guys. I'm just having fun. It's a, it's, it's a good time to have a bit of fun. <laughs> All right, so let me give it to you. All right? And some of you guys are gonna say, oh, really, crap? Is it true? All right, so let me give it to you guys. Let me give it to you right now. All those five presentations which I wasn't managed to sell anything, I was teaching. I was teaching. I was teaching. I was teaching. So all these places, all these five presentations I put together and I couldn't sell anything, all of them, all of them were the reason because I was teaching. I was teaching. I stood up and taught. So number one thing you must, must never, ever, never, 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 ever, 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 ever do, ever, ever do. If you are standing up and doing you know, trying to sell something, trying to influence people to do take action, you never teach. You never teach. Never, ever, ever teach. Never teach. Number one thing you never do is teach them. This is what happens when you teach them. This is what happens when you teach them. They stay in a friend zone. They stand up, shake your hand and say, thank you. Very well done. They come and give you a hug as well. Jag presentation was awesome. Thank you very much. I loved it. I really liked it what you said. Absolutely loved what you've been saying. Really like. Very impressive. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your time. And I was at the end. Oh, thank you. Don't thank me. Don't thank me. Buy something from me. Buy what, what I'm trying to sell. They was like, no, nah, thank you. I don't need this. Thank you. And they left. Left the building, left the house, left the room, everything, right? So, and I'm standing here, it's like, what's going on? It's like people are just coming and disappearing after some period of time, and they just keep saying thank you, right? They just loved me, right? They just liked it. So, now the question is, what do you should do instead of not teaching? That's a million dollar thing, right? could build your business from zero to million dollar just by doing this one thing. Now, let me ask you, let me have some bit of fun, right? Before I tell you. So what do you think you should do instead? If you can't teach them, what do you think you should do instead of that? What do you should do instead of that? Piss them off. <laughs> oh, Colin, uh, good. Good on you. Yeah, you don't piss your clients off. Please, don't do that. Don't listen to Colin, guys. Don't be an a-hole. Nah, thank you, Colin. I can't say these words here in public. Uh, nah, you shouldn't do that. No, you shouldn't do that. Discuss the problem. Yeah, that's one of them. Discuss the problem. Cool. Who else is there? What, what, what else you can do? If you can't teach them, inspire them. Good. That's a good one. Inspire them. Absolutely. Yeah, very good one. What else? What else is there? Who else believes something else? Agitate. Ah, all right. Who's talking? Ah, Josephine, did you agitate them in a nice way? Okay. Did you listen to the other videos by any chance? Educate them so that they purchase the system. Okay. Good one. You can say, join me, pay for it and get information. Mm, yeah, not really. Um, yeah, people don't like to be sold. Remember? Frame yourself as a route from the problem to desired outcome. Yeah. So, guys, uh, thank you for like sharing. It's not, uh, uh, it's not a right and wrong answer. So, look, not even saying it. I'm gonna share what works today based on my experience. So, all of you guys saying the right things. Absolutely, there is nothing right and wrong. Um, so don't take it in that way. So it's it's not something which works. So what I'm talking about after doing so many presentations, after failing in so many, you got to learn the hard way, right? You're going to start asking questions, you know, when things don't work, what we do as a human being, right? This is what we do. People who come from the system, I come from the system as well. Um, when things don't work, what we do, we start pointing fingers at us. That's what we do, right? We say, maybe, 
my English is not good. Maybe I need to learn more. Maybe I need to speak loudly. Maybe I need to go and learn something else. Maybe this is not right. Maybe my clothes were not right. Maybe I spoke too much. Maybe I did something too much. Right? We all do that. This is our way of uh, trying to fix the problem or trying to justify the problem. Show them what they desire and how they can provide. Yeah, good. So all of these answers are right, right? So there is nothing right or wrong, but I'm going to give you my, uh, based on my experience and what works. And if you do this, if you do this, I promise, 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 will change your business the way you create a presentation. The only thing you do is build a belief. The only thing you do is build a belief. So, see now, let's change the um, let's change the frame. Let's change the frame. You're standing up on a stage. You have a people in your room. Today, 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 when they come to the room where you're speaking, or they're watching you online, like the way you guys are watching me today, you are here. You are here because you have a certain belief. Right? You are, you are here in the room or you are watching me because you have a certain belief. Right? You want to learn something because you're already in the room. So what it means is that you already want to learn something. You want to learn something new. Say if I'm running a property seminar and you walk into the room, this thing is, if I give you a build your belief, whatever I'm going to teach you today, you can do it as well. The way I've shown you, you'll buy the product. Remember what we said? People don't buy for a few reasons. One is they don't have a desire. They just don't want to buy. The second thing is they don't trust you. The fourth, third thing is credibility. Then the value, right? Four things in there. If you build their belief, if you build their belief, they'll buy it. And I want to teach you how to build their belief. This is what happens, right? They must believe in three things. When they're sitting in the room and when they're sitting and watching me like this, the way you guys are watching it, they must believe in three things. Will I be able to do it? Whatever you guys showing, will I be able to do it? Whatever you shown, presented to them, will I be able to do it? The second is, if I do it exactly the way this guy or girl is showing me today, will I be able to get the results? Exactly the way this guy is showing me or the girl is showing me. If I do it, will I be able to get the results? Number three is, are you the right person to show me the path? Do you, are you credible? Do, can I trust you? Right? Can I actually trust you? Whatever you're showing me is the right thing. So these three things they must believe in. If they believe in these three things, you can influence them. If they don't do it, you will struggle. So teaching is nowhere close in these events when you stand up and speak. So number one thing is, will I be able to do it? If I, you know, whatever you're showing, will I be able to do it? If I do it, will I get the results? Can I trust this guy? That's number three. Can I trust this girl? Can I trust this person who's showing me the path? Right? Does it make sense? Does that actually make sense? Yeah. So all these things, what we talked about, problems or solutions. Yes, they are in the room. You're going to give them the solution. Yes, you're going to provide the solution. Yes, because they are already in the room. If I want to buy a property and I'm sitting there in the room, I want to learn how to buy a property. Yes, absolutely. You're providing a solution to a problem. But what I'm trying to give you this more information is don't teach them in the room. Build a belief by doing that so that they start a build. So how do you actually do these sort of things? There is a format to that. And let's go into that as well, right? The format. So this is first thing you understand before I go and explain you the steps. So yeah, testimonial is a part of that as well, right? So absolutely, um, Colin. So your presentation must follow a certain format to build that belief. If you want to build a belief, you follow the format. Uh, here are the steps. Number one is, these are three S's. Number one is story. Number two is the steps. Number three is the system. Story, steps, and a system. Story, steps, and a system. And we're gonna go through one by one in each of them, right? Number one is story. Show them how you did it. Show them how you did it. If you don't have a personal story, you didn't do it, Show them what you found in the marketplace. Remember what we said in the day number one? Remember what hat you are wearing? We talked about researcher. We talked about coach, consultant, all these people. So if you don't have your own story, you don't have runs on the board, you haven't done the work, you haven't made $100 million property yet, 
but you actually help so many people. You read the books, you know somebody else done it. So not your story then, it's that person's story, not your story in that case, right? Show them how you did it or show them how somebody else did it in their story, right? Show them how they did it. Steps is show them how they can do it. You give them the steps. Show them how people who are sitting in the room, how they can do it. Number three is show them how they can do it with you using your system. Show them how they can do it with you using your system or system, steps, formula, whatever you might have in place. Right, I'm just gonna take a break and uh, see if that sink in three things, right? So steps are really important. All of these things, what we're doing is to build the belief, right? That's the reason we're doing it. So all that format you have in place, that must go through that. Everything which I've been doing, if you haven't noticed it by now today, I've been doing this same thing with you. Same thing. I showed you the story, who I am, what I do. I showed you the steps for everything. I showed you the system and sometime, and you're going to get to see more. Right? So this is exactly the way it works. All right. Let me see here. Make sense? Cool. That's good. Awesome. Make them believe you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. So when I say build their belief, right, absolutely, right, awesome. They need to believe. Then story, step, system. Write it down everywhere. Three S's. Story, steps, system. Story, step, system. Take a photograph of this exactly on this slide. Show them how you did it. Show them how they can do it. Give them the steps. Go out from this room. When you leave this room, go and do it yourself. Right? This is my recipe. You can take it and do it yourself. But at the end, show them how they can do it with you. If they decide to work with you, how they can do it. What are the steps? These are the steps. They can do it with you, right? So you do that exactly that way, right? So that's very quickly, right? To get them to, yeah. Yeah, it's a simple, right? Success stories, yeah. Cool, yes, awesome. Let's, let's keep moving. Can I just go? Now start with stories. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yes, Colin, um, the, it, yeah, it works, my friend, and uh, we'll talk about it. Yeah, it's, uh, the reason for that is, uh, let's, let's get into this story first, right? Let's talk about this. So now talk about the story. Go back in your life and create on how you did it when you were in your client's shoes. See, most of you, and I truly believe it's about 80% of people who we work with, um, they're usually serving the people who they were a few years ago. Right? They're pretty much serving the same clients who they were a few years ago, right? Like I'm serving the same client which I was a few years ago. Like I didn't know how to find clients. I didn't actually know how to uh, make my business successful. I was keep, kept failing, kept failing, kept failing. And I didn't know how to get the clients. I used to say I was industry's best kept secret. So I'm pretty much serving the same people like me who was five, six years uh, from now, right? Years ago. So I'm doing the same thing. So I know most of you guys, if you're doing the same thing. So if you are not, if you are in that 20% where you're serving your story is not same as who you're working with, you probably know somebody else who's doing it, right? Who else has done it? Who will you follow, right? Who else has done it if it's not your story? So go back in your life and create steps how you did it when you were in your client's shoes. In most cases, your client are the same place at the same place where you were a few years ago. How did you come out of the situation? What did you do? To, what steps did you take? Right? What did you do? Right? Really important. What did you do in those steps? Tell them all that in a story, in a metaphor. Right? Metaphors, right? Not telling the steps. This is what you're telling. This is what happened when we did it, right? So all that in a metaphorical way all this. So my story, I failed in 13 startup. I used to spend so much time doing Facebook lives, constant on social media, social butterfly, going to every you know places, every meetings, every uh, business lunches, dinners, vlogs and blogs. I did 90 day freaking Facebook live. No clients came out of that. Why? 90 day Facebook live. Can you feel sorry for me? 90 day Facebook live every day. I was coming online doing Facebook live 
thinking somebody's going to give me the business. Nobody gave me any business. I didn't have any predictable and consistent business. Right? I didn't have any predictable or consistent business. That was my story. Now the question is, question for you guys is, can you relate to this story? Can you relate to this story? Right? Well, of course. Of course, you can relate to this story because you guys are pretty much, most of the people I work with, most of the people I work with, <laughs> most of the people I work with, uh, they're pretty much the same stage where I was. Yeah, that is disappointing. Of course, absolutely disappointing. Uh, you know, <laughs> thank you. I'm, I'm glad somebody's feeling sorry for me to doing 90 day live and nothing worked, man. That was pretty bad. Um, you know, that didn't work at all. So now the question is, you guys at the same place, right? You guys at the same place where I was. So I'm telling you, when I tell you my story, I want to be a relatable. So I want to tell you the steps after that. And then you're going to be like, holy crap, I'm, I'm at the same place. I'm exactly the same place. So I'm talking to your right brain. At the moment, I'm talking to your right brain. All these people who understand the brain sort of stuff, I want to give you something from right. I want to have the feeling that you feel that you... I, this person who is sitting on this side of the computer, you can relate to this person. That's why I'm telling you, I'm a relatable, right? I'm becoming relatable for you. If I'm not relatable, you're not gonna trust me, right? So that's why I'm telling you this story. That's the reason. So number two is, after I told you my story, I'm gonna give you steps. Now tell you exactly my steps. Tell them exactly the steps. Usually three steps, five steps, seven steps. Three pillars, four, you know, sorry, three steps, three secrets, four pillars, uh, exactly that way, right? So these are the steps are your recipe. I'm a big believer of recipes. Uh, if you haven't sort of noticed yet, I talk about recipes all the time. I talk about your recipe, your system. And let me give you this very quickly, the reason behind it as well. See, now you'll find today, you believe there's a lot of people out there who do the same thing. What are you doing? right? It's, it's given, right? In any marketplace, there are few people today that are doing exactly the same thing what you're doing. They're serving the same client. They're solving the similar kind of problem in the marketplace. They're doing the same thing. So what happens is your clients are confused. They're like, who do I go with? So what we're doing is by recipe is by giving the system means that I'm saying to them that I have a system. I have a steps. These are the steps. This is the formula. This is the things which we're going to use to make it happen for you. And this is how we do it in our company. All right. So very, very, very important. You must have your own system. You must have a recipe. And this is what happens. I learned from my good friend, Jamie Oliver, and uh, all these chefs taught me a lot. And one day was, you know, a couple of years ago, watching Jamie Oliver and his cooking gave me that aha moment. And that was a pretty big aha moment. I was, I saw him, cooking on YouTube, right? He was doing it. And I was like, he's giving his recipe for free. So, and I was like, holy crap. So I looked at every successful people after that. And then I started to analyze a bit more and started to discover it. Every successful people out there, name whoever you believe in today, they give their recipes for free. They wrote books, they did everything, they wrote everything in that, they sell stuff online, but they give recipes, whatever their formula is for free, either in their books or either on YouTube videos or either on webinar, live events, they give their recipe for free. Here's a recipe, go and do it yourself. Even people told in the books how to become a billionaire, right? They're giving, giving recipes free. Richard Branson wrote in his book pretty much the entire recipe, how he created $10 billion companies, right? entire zappos wrote a book exactly how they created a billion dollar company dom is everybody right so now you can you get the idea right steve jobs everybody so now it's really good way of doing it and then i sort of realized holy crap everybody's giving recipe for free they charge to implement those recipes right they only charge to implement those recipes so i do the same thing so you give them the recipe for free. I'll give you my recipe for free as well, don't worry. And you can do it yourself, right? But then you tell them your strategies as is. I tell people all my strategy as is. This is what we do, go and do it. 
there is nothing hidden. Once you become a client as well, you'll see everything. We do the same thing, but there is a difference, right? And I'm going to give you the difference as well. Who knows here the difference between strategy and tactic? Who knows the difference between a strategy and tactic? Can you tell me without Googling it? Without Googling it or Google it, I'm just saying it there, um, right? Right, tell me what's the difference between a strategy and a tactic? Difference between strategy and a tactic. Right, strategy and tactic. So let me quickly do this while you guys are doing it. Right, a strategy is a broad concept. Yeah, true. See, I'll give you an example. Yeah, you're right, right? Strategy is a broad concept, absolutely. So my strategy to get clients, it's pretty simple. We do Facebook ads, right? My strategy is doing Facebook ads. Strategy is a plan to, imp yeah, absolutely right. You're right, Colin, yeah. So strategy is doing Facebook ads. That's my strategy. But my tactic is, how to write the ad copy and what to do within that, right? That's my tactic. How to do a video, what's a script I use to do a video, that's a tactic. So the money is a tactic, not in strategies, right? So money is in tactics, not strategies. Anybody can do the same strategy, but they can't do the same tactics. Right? I'll give you an example of one tactic, just one tactic will change your life. Right. We had the same strategy. You guys remember the day number one? We did the videos. We showed you the videos by videos, how we did it. Give you an example in one of the videos, right? So these three by three videos, we did it. Uh, why videos, what videos, how videos. We had those videos, right? One of the what video didn't work, right? Every other video worked really well. People were coming and they were viewing it. You know, hundreds and hundreds of people viewing it. But video number one, which was what video number one, had only like 300 views. People were not just viewing it. They're dropping out really quickly. Only five or 10% people were watching it. And we were like, what the, f what the heck is going on? Everybody's watching every other video, not this one video, right? Why are they not watching it? What's the reason? And we discovered one thing. I did that video while I was sitting on my desk at my work, and I did the video like this. Exactly same thing, I did that. Then what I did after that is I walked on a Collins Street. We, I mean, I had an office on a Rialto Tower in the city at the time. And I came downstairs, um, same content, same everything, what I said on the desk on the video. I walked on the Collins Street with my phone holding like this and created the video, right? That's a tactic. That one thing changed the entire game for us. Absolutely. By walking on a Collins Street, saying the same content, but that video started to work after that, right? This is called tactic. These tactics makes money. Strategies don't make money, right? Tactics make money. Let's go back to those things what we were talking about, right? So, so my steps, my fast growth system, which you guys are gonna learn, three steps which we teach to generate 20 to $30,000 a month. And that's the same strategy we use for our business to get the clients, right? 20 to $30,000 a month um, and three steps. Exactly this is what we do, right? So this is for your left brain. So we all, we all know that we buy things because of our right brain, you know, because we emotionally attached, but you also need to give some sort of reasoning um, to your left brain as well, right? Some sort of reasoning. All right, so sorry, yeah, Colin asked a very good question. Let's go back into that, what I was talking about. Why did it work uh, while I was on Collins Street walking on that, right? So uh, I believe the difference was before that when I was sitting on a desk, there was no movement. I was sitting and it's kind of boring thing to do when you speak to the camera by itself. There's nothing, there's no movement. Going, there's no things moving behind me. When you walk, when things are moving, people get to watch more quickly and faster. So I think it's a, it's a really good strategy that when you wanna create a video as well, don't stand and talk, walk and talk on the videos. It works really well. Cool, hope that answers your question, Colin. Um, so three, step number three, talk about system, your system now. So now bundle the steps together to show them as a system. How are you gonna help them in next 90 days? 
or next 30 days or next 20 days or next 50 days, right? Now bundle the steps together and see how you're going to help them. Why system? Because people or the system provides a predictable and consistent outputs. Right? McDonald's has a system. IBM's got a system. Tony Robbins, a research company has got a system, right? So your presentation must create a gap. They must create a gap. If presentation fails to create a gap, they won't buy it. The gap is where they are, where they want to go. If they don't feel there is a gap, see, if they don't feel where they are today and where they want to go, there is no gap, they won't buy, right? If they don't feel there is a gap, they won't buy from you. At the end, show them how your system can fill that gap for them. That's your job. Right? You show them exactly how your system can fill that gap for them. How you can present your presentation, right? How do you actually deliver the work? What are the ways to deliver the work? What are the delivery different ways, right? Live presentations, live events, right? Stand up, invite it, put it on an event, right? Put it on a meetup, uh, create a live event. Do that because meetup, I can't stress enough how good that tool is. It's just free tool, man. I mean, when I say free, it means that it's only $270 per annum or something like that, right? It's just kind of a free tool. Put your meet up there, organize an event, stand up and speak. When you do that, people will come, right? So then you can do online masterclass, webinars, live events, right? Um, all these. VSL is a video sales letter. You can create a video sales letter, put it on a Facebook ads and do it that way as well. That works as well. So... This is one concept I want to talk about to you guys. Amateur change every week, professional keep the same presentation, right? Once presentation works, it works. You just keep it as is. Once it starts work, you just keep it as it. Never change anything. Who's been to Tony Robbins UPW? UPW is uh, um, Unleash the Power Within. It happens in Sydney and other parts of the world. He does seven or eight or 10 UPWs around the world. So if you guys been to the UPW event, he's been, been running that event from last 35 years. He's freaking telling the same story, same contact from last many years. Same story. If you heard that ding, uh, Ernie, Ernie story, he's been telling from last 35 years. Same story. Same story. Right? Because it works. It works. That's why he's telling the same story, same thing every time. So amateur change every week, professional keep it same, right? Professional. So this is something one of my friend, he's a musician. He gave me this advice. And when I had this advice, we're like, holy crap, this is gold. He said to me, I, I, we were having sitting down, having a conversation. And I said, um, Peter, you probably have to change all these you know, tricks all the time. You know, because you're a musician, you find new tricks, you have to find new tricks. He said, Jack, no, I've been showing the same eight tricks every time from last two years. I don't change tricks because I change audience, right? Amateur people, what they do, because they only have to show to you the family, friends, the people they know, they want to change every week every two weeks, right? So amateur change every week, professional keep the same presentation to you. Once you do it, once it works, you just execute it everywhere. VSL, webinars, uh, online events, pretty much everywhere. You do it everywhere, right? Because it works. That's the reason behind it. So let's recap. What do we learn today? What do you must never, ever, ever do? What you must never, ever do is teach them. Right? You never teach them in the presentation. You must have a presentation which build people's beliefs. Right? If you, they like your presentation, they will like you. Right? If they like your presentation, they just like you. But if they believe in your presentation, they'll buy from you. If they believe your presentation, they'll buy from you. That's the biggest, biggest reason. Right? Cool. You never ever teach. Right? Never ever teach. Right? Some. All right. Uh, cool. Anybody make sense? Make them believe. Yes. So one thing, what did you learn today? Hang on. Let me see if we have anything else left. All right. That's it. Done. Thank you. Done for today. Now let's have a look very quickly. What did you learn today? We've gone through a lot of stuff, guys. We've gone through massive, many, many things. And I think we went really quickly. Some of you guys uh, come back and uh, <laughs> look at it again. But what did you learn today? What did you learn? What did you learn? 
what sort of belief you have now. So what I did is, if you look at the workbook I uploaded, I put a challenge for you as well. I put a challenge for you as well. This is something for you guys if you're willing to accept it. This is a challenge for you if you're willing to accept it. I want to know when is the next date for your event? When is the date for your next event? When is the date for your next workshop event? Right? You probably do it. When is the date? So in the workbook, put a date for yourself. I put a date for yourself. I really want to see SSS. Absolutely. All right. Uh, yeah, the reason for that, uh, Anouk, is um, because that's relatable. I believe that. I think phones are getting much, much better. There's not that many shaky anymore. They used to be pretty shaky, but uh, now it's much, much better. Like I do all my or most of my videos uh, on my iPhone as well. They work really well. So absolutely, like studio is good. Uh, I never deny that. But I think uh, sometimes it's hard to get the studios in as well, right? So uh, I always recommend it. Just hold your phone and do it. All right. All right. Uh, let's have a look. So what? All right, so let's put a date in and let's get it done, guys. And tomorrow is pretty good. How are we gonna make people turn into your workshop? All right, so you're gonna do the workshop and you organize a workshop. Now, how are you gonna make people come to your workshop? That's a big thing, right? You must learn that as well. Now you did it, right? Now you did it. How are you gonna make them come to your workshop? How are you gonna make them come to attend your live event or either webinar or either something? How are you gonna make people do it? Tomorrow we're gonna to look at that. And if they turn up, if they turn up, what are you gonna to do to convert them? If they turn up, what are you gonna to do to convert them? Right, tomorrow's lesson's a huge uh, lesson. So awesome guys, Th thank you for sharing. All of you guys are sharing the dates and which is pretty cool. Go do the events, organize the event. Tomorrow we're gonna to talk about a uh, very important lesson, right? How do you bring people into the room? How you make sure that um, they turn up, right? That's what we're gonna to do tomorrow. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you for your company. Thank you for your energy today, as usual. Awesome, I had lots of fun, uh, as usual. Let me end this, let me stop sharing as well. And I had really good fun doing this with you guys today. So. If you have any question, please put it at the bottom. I'll have a look after this, uh, but thank you for your time and company. Let's, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow, where we're gonna talk about day number four, about the marketing. How are you gonna get people into the room?